Resident Evil. What the fuck is Resident Evil? You don't know the answer to that question? Get the fuck out of here, bitch. That was a little, that was a little aggressive. You, you don't have to leave. I'm, I'm about to explain it in a bit. <laughs> okay, so Resident Evil is a, a horror game franchise. Is it a horror? Okay, it's a horror game franchise. It's basically like zombie games, and they're pretty good. They've been, they've been around for a while, but now they're making their remakes. I think the last game that wasn't a remake was uh, Village, Resident Evil Village. Pretty good game. Uh, but I'm making this video, I guess, because of the recent drop of the new Resident Evil 4 remastered. And the Resident Evil 4, like the original games, I, I think that one's definitely the best. The best Resident Evil, the Resident Evil 4 uh, original, and now they're doing a remastered. So I was like, we gotta talk about it, we gotta talk about it. Uh, but since this is a, uh, a science-ish channel, I think we need to find some way to relate it back to the scientific realm, right? So let's talk about it. Specifically, let's talk about the zombie aspect of it. Is something like Resident Evil possible? Specifically there zombies for their undead right uh, and i guess to start off we need to know exactly what are the creatures in the resident evil series uh well if we want to be pretty loose with the term they are zombies which is uh which is primarily the dead brought to life uh, usually this uh, causes them to be very aggressive or feast on humans uh, this is important to note that they are zombies and not infected unlike something uh, such as the Left 4 Dead franchise. Uh, and the, the, the difference is very notable. While zombies are uh, the undead brought to life, uh, infected are normally, uh, usually still humans, but infected with some sort of virus, uh, which makes them aggressive, but still able to be uh, taken down. They still need their uh, <laughs> necessary functions like oxygen, uh, food, while the undead, and things that we classify as zombies don't really need uh, these uh, respiratory, uh, they don't have a sense of metabolism or things like that. So I guess to nip this right in the bud, you can't bring shit back to life. Like, <laughs> that's uh, at least not in a zombie-like way. There's no Frankenstein kind of creation uh, that we're capable, at least not yet, or not that I know of, right? So um, if you want to click off the video now, like, fuck it, right? Whatever, get the fuck out of here. I don't care. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's take it back down from the zombies and maybe take a look as if they were infected. So for the rest of this video, even though in the Resident Evil franchise they are zombies, uh, we're going to take the infected route for this conversation. Um, so what are these zombies? Well, the zombies in or infected, I'm going to keep calling them zombies because it's just, it's just easier. I don't want to keep saying infected. Uh, well, the zombies in Resident Evil are created from the T-Virus, from the Umbrella Corporation, uh, which is a, a bioweapon, which causes um, the, the undead to come back to life. There are some special zombie types, uh, such as zombie dogs, uh, lickers, and other various uh, power-type zombies, like the Nemesis or the Tyrants. Uh, and those are just like enhanced zombies you can think of them like super zombies uh they're ginormous they have like incredible muscle mass and perhaps even a few senses uh, i believe the liquors don't have eyes they have like a sense of like echolocation kind of like bats have uh but it's it's they're very interesting right uh so could something like that be real well let's take a look at these super zombies first uh well super strength Humans don't contain the strength that one of these super strong zombies would have, uh, nor the uh, endurance that any of these zombies have. They can take multiple bullets to the head and still keep on pushing. Uh, if I was to um, give an explanation for any of the strength of the super zombies, uh, in an engineering sense, I would, I would probably go to hydraulic machinery. So this is what you is used in heavy machinery or an, even in some animatronics uh, at like zoos for like dinosaurs or um, Chuck E. Cheese. But this is pretty stupid to take the uh, engineering route to solve this kind of problem. We know that the T-Virus is a biological weapon and not a 
uh, mechanical system. It's not like they have these soldiers uh, bought and put in suits of hydraulic machines in which they drive around and kill people. No, it's a, it's a fast spreading virus, uh, which affects most people. Uh, some people uh, ch chosen as a specific can be uh, given super abilities uh, while most of them uh, obtain the normal zombie vacation that we uh, expect. Uh, is there any real life examples that we can draw from to, to get these, um, these same types of reactions? Real life diseases uh, that can lead to aggression and is even transferred through biting, uh, we can think of as rabies. So rabies have, uh, a, have a few side effects, uh, delirium, hallucinations, hydrophobia, the fear of water, uh, insomnia, and aggression, uh, which is what we tend to see in a zombie. Um, the, even the fear of the light, they, they like to be, people with, uh, who are infected with the rabies uh, don't like to be in super bright places. Uh, which uh, I guess you can kind of, I, I'm thinking of Minecraft on this one, but we tend to have those things together. Uh, another example we can think of are the zombie ants fungi. Uh, I guess you could take a look at this as at the uh, Left for Dead route, or not the Left for Dead, the uh, Last of Us route, uh, the fungus which can take control of a host and then um, basically control them to do their bidding. Uh, in the real world, a fungi will usually take uh, control of an ant Take the ant to a proper location in which it is to give birth to its offsprings uh, of the fungus uh, so that it can spread more readily uh, there are plenty more examples but i think we'll i think we'll just stick to the small sample size because i'm not a <laughs> a zombie channel uh well uh from what i've listed these things alone aren't enough to create the zombies that we're, we're looking for uh so i guess that's it right we're just finished well, you're fucking wrong, stupid. You can see the time below, dumbass. <laughs> okay, well, these, uh, these things that we've listed, they, they don't pack enough of a punch, and they're too separate to be continued to the same thing, and one of them only works on ants. So wh what are we gonna do here? Let's insert a real uh, thing that is used called CRISPR. What is CRISPR? If you've never heard of CRISPR, CRISPR, uh, in layman's terms, is a... Uh, highly precise gene editing tool. Uh, and what this does is it works by cutting your DNA sequence at specific locations and deleting and inserting other types of DNA sequences to have the outcome you want to uh, perform. Uh, so you can think of DNA as like a blueprint of how your body or a specific system will be built. Uh, so changing the blueprints will have uh, a different structure built uh, in this case. Uh, so CRISPR in this case can be used to update certain genes. Uh, uh, if we were to apply these to real world examples or to the examples we listed prior, uh, the fungus, which we talked about earlier, only affects ants. Uh, what if we were able to change that? What if uh, it was such a way which you could make them affect people? I'm no fungus expert, right? Uh, but if I was to guess, I would say that is a DNA alterable thing. Maybe not to the Last of Us extent, uh, but who knows? Maybe that could be do that. That could do something. If we were to assume, for the cases of this video, that something like that is totally possible, that we can uh, affect the fungus such enough that it could take control of a human host and then use it for its own uh, malfeasance. <laughs> or I guess in this case it's own survival, but we're talking about zombies here. And now, that gets two things off the table. One, we can get the infected, which we were looking for, not quite the undead, but that's fine. And two, we can make them do actions in which a normal person normally wouldn't. But that's, that's only half the solution. How can we introduce uh, the other thing we mentioned, rabies? Uh, well, uh, we're talking about a bioweapon produced by the Umbrella Corporation, super rich and incredibly powerful uh, corporation, it's scarily powerful in the games. I don't know where these, uh, <laughs> these checks and balances are coming from in that company, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's, it's not too far believed that their genetic or that their bioweapon can have uh, a two-fold purpose, one uh, for the CRISPR uh, 
uh, fungus, and for two, the rabies virus, or in such a concoction, which both of them can be combined into one super virus, if we were to uh, give it that term. So with those two, with that special concoction, which we've just uh, uh, created, <laughs> this would give us the uh, common zombies more or less that you would see uh, within the Resident Evil franchise or perhaps other franchises, but this is a Resident Evil video. We're gonna keep it within the realms of Resident Evil. Uh, but this could carry on to other uh, zombie games. Uh, but what about the super uh, zombies? Uh, you can see these in many different games. Uh, we can think of the nemesis in this one. We can think of uh, the tank in Left 4 Dead. Uh, these super roided out zombies that just toss like cars like it's nothing you know what i mean uh can that be explained well not entirely but if we're going back to crispr crispr can edit genes muscle mass and <laughs> your pr your propensity to gain muscle mass is a dna factor crispr can also do that crispr can cause noticeable increases in muscle mass this is uh primarily used uh, in the agricultural section uh, where they create a uh, fish or uh, livestock which have more muscle on them which can then be harvested and sold uh, and, and to the uh, food supply uh, but if we were to take a uh, I, I believe it was from China I don't remember exactly but they basically made these uh, super dogs right these, these jack dogs right like crazy like you wouldn't even imagine uh, from these uh, from the same uh, CRISPR gene editing thing uh, What's to say you can't do that to a human? <laughs> uh, and I will preface this has never been done to a human before there are like uh, Institutions were like yeah, like we can't be using this technology to create super soldiers But the umbrella corporation don't give a fuck like who's who's stopping them? They'll do whatever the fuck they want in their viruses, right? Uh, this can also explain why most of the common zombies uh, have are just the regular what we uh, expect them to be while some uh, uh, some specific chosen uh, can have uh, super uh, abilities like the nemesis uh, as for things like the liquor uh, it's already been established that you can take genes from one existing animal and then insert them into another animal uh, in this case uh, like I mentioned earlier if the liquor does use echolocation then the bat, the echolocation of bats uh, inserted into the, G the DNA sequence of a person could perhaps get their ability. Obviously, this is crazy to think about. This is uh, kind of inhumane, actually, uh, which is kind of scary to think about. It's one of actually the biggest real-world um, ethical issues with CRISPR. Uh, in the real world, CRISPR is used for treatments for people with genetic diseases. Uh, this can include things like cancer or even uh, mental illnesses. Since a lot of mental illnesses have genetic markers in them. Uh, as seen in this video, CRISPR can be super powerful and because of this there are a lot of ethical issues that comes with using this kind of technology. Which is, uh, interestingly enough, one of the biggest topics of CRISPR. Uh, usually when <laughs> uh, big uh, advancements are made, you usually talk about the advancement. But with CRISPR, it, it's kind of it's kind of different. You're, you're basically playing uh, God a little bit. Uh, you're just changing things that a lot of people argue you shouldn't be changing in the first place. Uh, I mentioned earlier how uh, this technology was by scientists not permitted to use uh, super soldiers. Maybe different governments have different rules. Uh, but some of the biggest questions or ethical questions is, uh, should these changes be made? How much should be allowed to be changed? And should it only remain in medical purposes? And obviously, all, and the biggest one is, uh, the dangers if it was to be somehow weaponized like in this video uh, that we talked about weaponizing CRISPR and any anything that can attack or even change the genes uh, is a big possibility creating bioweapons is <laughs> scarily enough not only in the realm of fiction or a stupid YouTube video uh, these things can be an issue but that's what I think I think that it is totally possible maybe not to accurately recreate but to create some form of a infected like individual uh, not only from the resident evil but uh in in the uh, events that we talked about in this video i think it's entirely possible which uh, it can be done i think we have the technology to do it uh perhaps with some refinements <laughs> 
you can make it really nice. Um, but other than that, what do you think? What do you think about this video? What do you think about the ethical issues? Uh, leave, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, until next time, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Uh, also, if you wanna, if you want more of me, I stream every Saturdays and Sundays, 5 p.m. CST. Um, other than that, peace out. Have a good day.